Welcome back to the tutorials. So in the last tutorial, we looked at how we dealt with collisions with monsters or enemies. And um, when we collided with the enemy in the last video, uh, we moved back to the start position in the level. Um, there are other options available, but that's the one that we're going with with, uh, with this tutorial series. So in this series, I'm going to be looking at uh, this next video. I'm going to be looking at um, how we deal with or how we can deal with monsters by obviously shooting them. So we're going to look at uh, the firing of bullets. Um, in the next video, we will look at what happens when the bullet collides with various different objects um, uh, and how to, to, to deal with those. But just for the purpose of this video, we're going to break this down into a number of steps um, and uh, it's going to be solely uh, looking at um, firing a bullet from the player object. So it's not going to deal with collisions, just firing the bullet. So the first thing that I wanted to go through with you is creating the sprite for the bullet because we're going to be resizing the canvas. So I'm just going to right click on my sprites, uh, uh, assets, title, and I'm going to create a sprite. Uh, a sprite, there we go. Now, when we create a, a sprite, it defaults to a size of 64 pixels by 64 pixels. That's going to be way too big because the bullet would be the same size as the player. We don't want that. So I'm going to resize the canvas first. So I'm going to click the resize and here I'm going to resize the canvas. I'm not going to scale the image. I'm going to resize the canvas and I'm going to use something like eight by eight. Let's try that eight by eight. And I'm going to apply it. If I click this button here, it's center fits and I'm going to change the origin at the top here. Okay. We don't want it there. We want it in middle center. So I'm just going to click middle center. Oh, that's the wrong way. Sorry, middle center there. And you can see it moves the uh, the origin to the center of the sprite. So what I'm going to do now is to uh, edit the image and I'm just going to fill it with a white fill. If you wanted to use a different color bullet, that's absolutely fine. And I'm just going to click the fill button there, close that down and my sprite is created. Okay. I'm now going to create an object for my bullet, which wears that sprite. The one thing I haven't done here is rename the sprite. So I'm just going to go SPR underscore bullet. Okay. And then I'm going to press enter and now it's named and I can close that down. I'm now going to create a new object to, that's going to wear that, um, that sprite. So I'm going to create an object. I'm going to call it OBJ underscore bullet. enter and I'm going to allocate the sprite to my um, object so there's my bullet sprite so I'm going to leave this open because I'm going to be using this um, this object in a second now in game um, I'm going to be firing a bullet when uh, a key is pressed so I'm going to use the space bar for my for my key press so in my player object I need a an event for what happens when I press a space bar. So I'm going to open up my player object. Okay, now I've got two different objects on the screen here now. So let's have a look at these events. So I'm going to add an event. You can see that I've got two different ones here, key down, key pressed and key up. Key down is what we used when we did the movement. So as long as I keep the key down, it will keep performing the action that's in the event. Now I don't want that because if I do that, if I keep the space bar pressed down, it's going to uh, produce loads and loads of bullets. And I don't want that. I want it to produce one bullet when I press the space bar. Okay. Key up checks when you release the key and key pressed checks um, when you've pressed the key and released it. So um, we're going to use key pressed. Okay. And I'm going to use the space bar for my bullet. Okay. So this is what's going to produce my bullet. So um, firing a bullet. Okay, so don't forget, always try and use comments where you can to help um, to uh, identify what your code is doing. It's going to really help you when you come to uh, debug or when you come to explain um, what you've done in your program. So we're going to use a pre-built function, an inbuilt function to do this. Um, and what it's going to do, it's going to create an instance on the current layer. So if I open up my rooms, just to explain what I mean by that. Okay, and open up room one. Okay, you can see that we have layers and we have 
uh, the inst and we're currently on the instances layer. This is what this layer is called, instances. Okay, so when I create any instance in my game, it will appear on this instances layer, unless I, spec unless I tell it otherwise. So everything that appears in game is an instance. So every single one of these um, tiles is an instance. My monster is an instance. My uh, player object is an instance, and each bullet I fire will have will be an instance. That's why it's called instance create layer. So let me just close my room down so I get rid of that on the side. So if I start typing this in, and I'll explain it as I go. Instance underscore. So I'm clicking the thing, instance underscore create underscore layer. Okay. Layer. And I open a bracket. And now at the bottom of the screen, it's showing me or that's asking me to type in a couple of parameters. So I'm looking down at the bottom here. Okay, so instance create layer. So create an instance, so that's the instance create, on a layer that I specify. That's what that means. So it's going to ask me, firstly, where do I want to create the instance? Well, I want to create the instance at the current X and Y position of my player. Okay, so, um, and that's going to be at the point of origin. So it's going to produce it in the center. So I'm going to uh, just type in X because I wanted to produce the uh, the bullet in um, on the X point of my of my player object, comma Y because I want to produce the uh, the instance in the right in the, in the same Y position. So it's going to produce it in the same place, comma the layer ID. Okay, that is important. That you put that in speech marks. And remember I said that the layer name was instances. If I open up the room, just to show you again, the layer name is instances. This is the layer name. So that's what I'm gonna type into my um, line of code here. Instances, comma. And what object do I want to create? Well, I wanna create uh, the bullet object. So I need to type in the object name. So there's the object name there, so it's obj underscore bullet okay I'm going to close the bracket and don't forget it's important that you close the statement off with a semicolon so I'm going to go instances create so I'm going to create an instance on the layer in the position x and y so don't forget the current position of x and y if I did it now would be here okay so that's where I want my x and y um, on the layer called instances, which matches the name that's on here. So if I'd rename that layer to um, to game, okay, then in that speech, in those speech marks, I would have typed in game, but I'm not going to rename my uh, my instances layer, comma, and then the ob name of the object that we want to create, obj underscore bullet. So if I typed in obj underscore monster, when I press the space bar, it would create a monster in that place rather than the bullet. Okay, so let's. Um, compile the game and see what happens here. So I'll just wait for the game to compile. Okay, so I'm in game. So when I press the space bar, it produces a bullet. Okay, however, the bullet is not doing anything because we haven't set the bullet a speed. So we've, we've created the instance of the bullet in the layer, but we haven't given it any speed. So let's rectify that straight away. So when we create the bullet, we want it to have a speed. So this is where we need to come back down into your bullet object, and we're gonna add an event, and we're gonna add a create event. So I'm gonna add a comment to the start of my code to show, um, or to, uh, to identify what this piece of code is gonna do. So this is um, bullet speed, uh, oh no, I'll call it creating the bullet. bullet speed okay so I'm just going to type in speed because that's the, uh, the an inbuilt um, variable equals I don't know let's make a number up try five let's see where, how, we, how we go with five with a semicolon on the end of the of the, um, of the line of code so let's uh, run that and see what happens now 
So let's compile that. Okay, so now my character's moving, and now you can see that my bullet is firing. But I've got a problem, and that is, regardless of where I go, the bullet is only traveling to the right. And that's not good for us. You can all, uh, so if I wanted to try and shoot that monster, okay, that's not going to work. So um, we need to do something to combat that. So we need to tell, give the bullet also a direction. Um, so in the same ways we used um, 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees to make the monster move, we also need some way of telling the bullet which way to go. And what we want to do is to um, fire the bullet wherever the character was moving last. So if, for example, the character is moving to the right and I click the space bar, I wanted to fire to the right. If the character was moving left, and I click the space bar, I wanted to shoot left, okay? So we're gonna use something called a variable to enable us to record where our, or the, the direction in which our um, character is facing. So a variable is, um, you could think of a variable as like an envelope that holds a value. Um, and it's recorded in a name, okay? So, um, when you do algebra, for example, in um, in mathematics, and you have um, a equals three, and well, the variable name is a, okay? So um, that's what we're going to do. So we're gonna record um, where the character is facing last. In order to do this, we're going to be doing some more work on the uh, player object. And what we're going to do, we're gonna create do it, use a create event again, because before we can use a variable, we have to declare it. We have to say what, um, give it an initial value. Um, and there are three types of variables we can use in um, in GameMaker, all of which we'll use through the through, through the um, the, the uh, tutorials. The first is a local variable, which is something that's only used in a piece of code that you write. There's something called an instance variable, which is what we're going to be using now, which is which deals with an instance, which is the object player. And instance variables can be used outside of um, the player object, for example. So I could use that uh, that variable, that value, somewhere else in the program. And the third type of uh, variable that we that we uh, you can use is something called a global variable. Variable, and global variables uh, we are going to be using in this program, um, and they're used to uh, to be able to for you to to use values in any part of the program, uh, a lot. So that would be something like score and lives, for example, would be global variables. And we're going to use global variables uh, a little bit later on in one of the future tutorials. But for this um, particular piece of code, we're going to be using an instance variable. So what we want to do is to, uh, to add an event and we're going to create uh, a create event. So when we have um, a create event, like I say, this is what happens when the object is created. Um, so I'm just going to say, when the player object is created. Okay, so that's just a comment, of course. Um, what I want to do is to set the value of um, a variable. So I'm gonna use um, a, ver you can, a variable name, can be any name you want. I could call it Tony if I wanted to. Okay, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm, it's obviously you need to try and uh, wherever possible uh, make the variable names as um, sensible as possible. So I want to uh, this this is going to re be recorded in the direction in which I can shoot. So I'm going to call this variable shoot dir. Okay, shoot direction. Um, and I'm going to set the initial value of that to zero. Okay, finishing with a, with a, a semicolon. So that's setting the shoot direction of uh, my uh, bullet to zero, okay? So um, I can use that now in my program. So um, let's go on to um, what happens when I uh, press the left key. So at the moment, as I press in the left key, um, I'm moving, um, Backwards or, or to the to the left, um, of 180 degrees uh, by five spaces. So what I want to do when I press the left key, I also want to change the value of shoot dir 
equals and I'm going to change that to um, 180 so I'm going to be shooting that way oh this way okay that's 180 that's zero so 180 is so if I'm moving my character this way okay this way then um, I want to shoot the bullet at 180 degrees which is to the left okay so let's go back to my workspace and I'm going to finish with a semicolon and I'm then going to go on to uh, my key uh, my key down right and if um, I'm moving right I want to shoot dir equals zero so I want to set the shoot direction to zero okay let me just go back to that left right the next mission mark there and that means that what I've typed in there doesn't match a variable. So if I go back to my create event, and this is interesting because this is something you're gonna have to look for. Shoot DIR, you can see I spelled it S H O O T D I R. When I've done my left, I've missed out the T, so it's telling me with this exclamation mark that I've made a mistake. So if I type in the T there, okay, that um, exclamation mark now disappears. So it's important you keep your eye almost going on with the, with the coding windows because that would have uh, caused an error. So the last thing I need to do to, to get this bullet to fire properly is to go into the create object of my bullet. I'm just gonna do this before my speed command. You, it, does, you doesn't have to, you can do it after your speed command if you want. I am going to, um, to type in my code now to give my bullet its direction. So I wanna set the direction because don't forget direction is, a, is an input variable, is gonna be equal to um, OBJ. So the direction is gonna be equal to the, 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 the way in which my player object is facing. So don't forget that because the variable is being created in my player object, I need to type in the name of the object that the variable is in. So um, it's easy just to show you. So obj underscore pl uh, player dot shoot dir okay so what that's saying is put the direction i'll set the direction of the bullet to shoot dir in the object player instance okay so because don't forget that variable is in the ob obj player instance so what we're doing is referencing this variable in this object, okay? So, as I said, referencing this variable, shoot dir, which appears here, okay? In the player object, obg player, okay? That's, so that's where you're setting the direction to the shoot, the variable shoot direction uh, directory, uh, shoot dir, which appears in the obj player object, okay? So let's play it and see what happens now. So, so I'm moving right, uh, to the left, okay, it's shooting to the left, I move to the right and it's shooting to the right. Okay, so I've now got um, a working game or a working uh, bullet firing system where it's firing bullets in the right direction, okay. You could increase the speed of the bullet if you wanted to. Uh, we have got some problems in the fact that the bullet goes through the wall and it also goes straight through the ghost. So. Um, we're going to be dealing with the with the bullets uh, and collisions uh, in the next video. Um, if you did want to increase the speed of the bullet, it's quite straightforward. All we need to do is to go back into this uh, OBJ bullet and the create event for the bullet. And if I set that to 10, for example, and then rerun the game, because that might be one of the criticisms of your game when you're testing it. Okay, so if I shoot now, you can see that the bullet is firing much quicker than it was in the, in the previous one. As a matter of fact, I think it's better, so I'll probably leave this at 10. Okay, so in the next video or in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at um, dealing with what happens when the bullet collides with objects. So what happens when it collides with the walls and what happens when it collides with the monsters or ghosts. Okay, so I'll see you in the next tutorial.